you want. Got a minute, sir. KPD. Oh, God, they're here. The cleaners are here. Oh. Oh, you're in there. I just want to know if he heard something from the fucking... <sighs> Whatever. Hey, PD, I need to talk to you. You broke it! No, you broke it! Nuh-uh! Will you get these kids to shut up? I'm fucking talking here! Yeah, what's this about? Do you know the tenant in apartment 7? Dad, Tommy's picking on me! Shut up, snitch! I thought I told you to shut up! 7, huh? Nah. Can't say that I know the guy. Okay, so it's a guy. Yeah, well, seen him once or twice. I might have a vague recollection. Could you give me a vague description? Maybe. What's it to you? My son might have been staying in that apartment. I'm trying to find him. Well, why don't you tell me what he looks like? I'll let you know if it rings a bell. We lost touch. It's been a while. Huh. Sign of the times, I guess. See, I'm a family man myself. You shut up! No, you shut up! No, you! I swear, if you don't shut up this instant... Uh, yeah, I can tell. So, can you describe him, or what? Young, probably in his 20s. Medium height, medium build. He wasn't very... memorable. Have you seen anything suspicious around the building? Any strangers skulking around? Nah, I don't pay much attention to the other tenants. Bunch of losers. A lot of... You are so dumb. Not as dumb as you are. Nuh-uh, you're way dumber. Shut the fuck up! Not upstanding citizens like you. You bet your ass. Good thing we'll be getting out of this dump soon. Is that right? Yep, I've been working my way up. I even filed for a status upgrade. Once that goes through, we'll be moving to a B-class district in no time. Yeah, good luck with that. Dang. That apartment's probably small as hell. If they can't go to another room and shout at each other. Toilet's open. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Uh, they didn't do it. Anyways, I am here to see if anyone will answer now. KPD. I need to ask you some questions. Do you know what's going on? My hollow projection got cut off. I, I can't get a signal. The building is under lockdown. No external connection. Not much we can do. Shit. Sounds serious. So, uh, you wanted to ask me something? Do you know who lives in apartment seven? Seven? I didn't even know anyone lived there. Uh, hey, you wouldn't happen to know when they're going to fix the connection. Not that it's, like, super important to me or anything. I just need to know. I'm not sure if anyone even knows we've been locked in. It might take a while. Oh, God. Uh, I mean, sure, that's fine. It's just, you know, the apartment feels very small all of a sudden. Kind of claustrophobic. <sighs> Is it hot in here? I'm sweating something awful. Just take a deep breath. It's going to be fine. Of course it is. Why wouldn't it be? I'm just going to sit here and wait for them to fix it. Can you talk to me some more? It makes it kind of easier.
Well, what do you want to talk about? Oh, um, uh, yeah, you know, uh, Gorski the Giant was fighting Killer Cromer today. You an AMA fan? Uh, not really. Sounds like you are. Of course, I don't know who won since my projector went out. <sighs> Why are my hands shaking? You've been living here long? Oh, well, I, uh, uh, it must have been at least seven or eight years. Ever had a lockdown before? Um, I don't think so. I don't remember my projector going off. Ever. Sorry, I don't have time for this. Oh, okay. Uh, I understand. It's no problem. I'll just sit here, alone. God, I'm really starting to sweat like a pig. <laughs> Hang in there. <laughs> That's what happens when you rely on TV too much. Hey, you there! Come here, quick! Oh, thank you. I guess. What is it? What's up with the lockdown? Is it the Ugh. page? Was there an outbreak? A malfunction, more likely. You would say that, wouldn't you? To keep us at bay until the cleaners come. Oh God, they're coming for me. I don't want to die. Calm down. No one's coming. KPD, I need to talk to you. Get away from me, man. I got a piece on me, and I ain't afraid to use it. No, you don't. Now, calm down. I'm just looking for some answers. Oh, I know how you get your answers. I got nothing to tell you. to the door, please. Just want to talk. Who are you? Did Chiron send you? I'm with the KPD, if that's what you're asking. Seriously? We haven't had a cop around these parts in... ever, I guess. Well, you've got one now. Yeah, good luck. You're gonna fucking need it. Voices from below, don't believe the lies, the plague is still out there.
My dear Annie, by the time you read this, I will no longer be among the living. The details are not important. Just know that I went out on my own terms. I won't ask for a proper burial. God knows you don't owe me anything, and by the time the cleaners are done with this place, I doubt there will be anything left of me to bury. Just know that, for all my faults, I have always loved you, just like I loved your mother when the disease took her. A part of me died that day. Simple displays of affection became a foreign concept, a painful reminder of what I had lost. It does not justify what I've put you through, but it is the truth. I am so happy you managed to get out of this hellhole and find someone worthy of your love. I wish you both all the best. Love, Dad. Oh, this is scrollable. Is, is Mom gonna be alright? Fellow Undesirables, if you're up to date on the Chiron propaganda, you probably heard our so-called Minister of Health spout out another gem of corporate wisdom. For those of you who didn't, let me catch you up to speed. To all of those who have given in to the surgeon fear-mongering, I say again, there is absolutely no need for concern. The nanophage is no longer a threat. We have contained the glitch and thus freed ourselves from the disease. Loyal citizens who support responsible augmentation have nothing to be afraid of. Three words. Bull fucking shit. Let me tell you how things really are. Unless you're one of the lucky A-class fucks with a shiny set of mods, in which case you're probably not reading this, the nanofag is still very real. We have had at least three confirmed cases in the past year, one of which led to a small-scale outbreak. Luckily, we managed to contain it before it spread beyond control. Now, you might think three cases ain't nothing to be excited about. If so, I can tell you never, you've never been in an outbreak. For most of us cooped up in C-class districts, even a single instance is too many. Okay, so what the hell are you supposed to do? First and foremost, it's better to prevent than cure. Given the fake recovery rate, these words should be considered gospel. Once the plague hits, it's usually too late, so if you want to stay safe, look for these symptoms. Fever. Pay attention to even the slightest bump in body temperature. The fake starts off as slow, barely noticeable, than the flu. So if you're feeling a bit under the weather, get your ass to the local clinic and run a scan. Better safe than sorry. Implant irregularities. This is where it gets tricky. Assuming, like most of us, you can't afford to run regular mod maintenance, you've probably gotten used to the old jolt of your neural implant or a slight spasm in your artificial arm. However, if these start to occur at an increased rate, you need to check yourself. Erratic behavior. Every once in a while, try to look away from the projector and take a gander at your neighbors. If any of them are acting weirder than usual, babbling to themselves, walking crooked, they might be afoot. Assuming you're not drunk or high, a bit of civic awareness won't kill you. A lack of it might. Juncture inflammation. Okay, so the skin at the base of your implant turns red and starts to itch. The bad news is you might be infected. The good news is, it's not a death sentence. Our clinics have performed numerous extraction surgeries and unlike the corporate cleaners, most of our patients tend to leave operating rooms alive. As long as there's no nanite punctures, it's still not too late. If there are, you must likely too busy hallucinating and puking blood to notice. If you spot any of these symptoms in yourself or anyone in your neighborhood, contact one of our clinics. If you don't know how to find us, ask around. We got eyes and ears all over C districts, so chances are we'll find you. Now here's what you definitely don't want to do. Right? 1. Don't panic. Chances are it's still not the fake. We've had dozens of false reports on alleged outbreaks that turned out to be a nasty case of the pigeon flu or an old implant gone haywire. Don't be an idiot. The last couple of months, we had dozens of incidents of violence aimed at suspected carriers. Guess what? It doesn't solve anything. Once the Z states root, we're all in this together. Do not report it. I can't stress this enough. The cleaners are not your friends. They're not coming to help you. Best case scenario, they'll lock down the entire building, 
go through it with a fine tooth comb using the outbreak as an excuse to confiscate subversed materials and detain any undesirables. Worst case scenario, the ones they don't slaughter outright will end up as guinea pigs for cure on R&D. If it comes to that, do yourself a favor and pack it in. Jump out a window, blow your brains out, doesn't matter how, just make it last. You won't thank me later, but you'll regret it otherwise. Okay, with fire and sword. Why wouldn't he? Taking this. Synchrosine collected. The wall stands tall. Our brave boys and girls continue to defend us from the eastern hordes. A shot rings out in the dark. Michael, the younger soldier next to me, immediately turns to the wall. The intensity of his gaze sends chills down my spine. Without a second thought, he runs up the wall in imposing colossus of concrete and steel. He mounts it in a single leap, using his state-of-the-art leg augmentations, a little gift bestowed upon our troops by the Chiron R&D department. The scout aims his rifle into the inky blackness. His cybernetic eyes scour the horizon for any sign of the enemy. Staring and resolute, his comrades hold their breath, waiting for him to say the word. What will it be this time? The sole scavenger or a full-on assault from one of the numerous raiding parties that scour this unholy land? When finally he speaks, I cannot help but to shudder from the sheer intensity of what was transpiring. All quiet! All quiet on the eastern front, at least for now. Guarding the wall can be a daunting task. Michael confesses the following morning, but it's also a privilege. The other soldiers gather in the katina, nod their heads in approval. Michael introduces his squad members, some of which are on their second or third tour of duty. Several firm handshakes later, the soldiers regale me with stories of their service each one more breathtaking than the last. When I ask what drives them to such acts of heroism, Michael lowers his head and responds in a slightly embarrassed tone of voice. I don't think anyone here considers themselves a hero. I know I don't. The way we look at it, we are all part of something much greater than ourselves. Something that began with our fathers fighting the big one. Ah, yes, the big one. Such an unassuming name for the greatest conflict of our times. One we all know as the Great Decimation. A name given not to belittle, but to simplify. A desperate attempt to make sense of this unprecedented tragedy, during which many of our nation's finest gave all there was to give in defense of our way of life, nay, our very existence, from the barbaric hordes of the East. And yet, out of this cauldron of conflict, this baptism of fire, we have emerged victorious. And while the old world was engulfed in flames, in its ashes, we have built our great republic to all the heroes that gave their lives and health in the great decimation. We salute you. While the soldiers' dedication is undeniable, their service is made much more bearable due to the contributions from the Board of Defense and Chiron's top scientists. Michael is quick to agree. If it wasn't for the corporate government, some of us would not have made it this long. Take these babies, for example, he says while affectionately patting his glistening leg prosthetics. Without them, I would be a cripple, wasting away in some hospice, unable to serve my fellow citizens. Thanks to Chiron, I can fulfill my role in our great society, spoken like a true patriot. 
And let us not forget that Chiron takes care of our brave men and women on and off the field of battle. Our ongoing veteran rehabilitation incentives ensure the soldiers who are no longer able to serve can reintegrate into society so they can lead rich and fulfilling lives once their glory days are behind them. Oh, so ground floor, apartment seven, Leon Grabisky. Of course, two agents. Helena Novak, apartment 104, and Hannah Nader, apartment 106. Both on the same floor. One o number six is apartment 107, the storage space. And I need to find the other name before I go look through her stuff. But number six is my boy. Right? A six in the basement. Ah! Get out. You again. Not a good idea to sneak up on me, you know. Need to get out. Um. Yeah, I must have taken a wrong turn. These hallways all look the same. Hallway, public, office, authorized personnel only. Dude, I didn't want to tell him police business. Police business, I know what I'm doing. <laughs> I know what you are. Oh, yeah. I was trying to hide it. Back during war, took one alive, sent for one. A few to get into his head. You fought in the big one. Is that why you got all this junk in you? Plasma sweep. Hit our convoy. <clears throat> Borrowed through armor. Sorry, I didn't mean to bring back memories. Yes. Memories. What can you tell me about the tenant in apartment 7? Mm -hmm. Tenant. Yeah, tenant. How long has he been living there? Yeah. Maybe longer. Not good with time. You ever talked to him? Didn't get out much. None of them do. All right, Tin Man. Let me know if it comes back to you. Something triggered the lockdown. Trying to get it open. Rudy and I. You think it might be the nanophage? You had any recent outbreaks? No. Last one. Long time ago. Down by the river. All the implants. Bad the implants. Take it, Rudy is the robot. Multifunction service and maintenance. Drone, don't lose it. What? Mm, wonders of sometimes. I need to track manually. Can we lift the lockdown from the inside somehow? Or get a message out? No. Keep people in. Isolate, accommodate, alleviate. Yeah, we all know how that last one used to work. All right, I'm heading out. Can you give me full access to the building? Uh huh. Uh, assistance. Unstable. 
I'll look them. What I could. Thanks. You better stay here. There might be some very nasty people out there. Nasty. Uh, huh. Bad. Look, just stay safe. You know what? I never got your name. I'm Dan. Oh, name? Janus. Like a Roman god. <laughs> you know. Sorry I gave you a hard time earlier. Good to meet you, Janus. Just all not good. You I mean, know, it's like six. Go away. KPD. Mind if I ask you a few questions? Mrs. Uh, excuse me? Mrs. Nader. All right. Uh, Mrs. Nader. What do you want? in the last hour? No, I have not. Could you check your compass for connections? Somebody may have used it as a proxy. I don't have a compass. No compass? I thought pretty much everyone had one at this point. Oh, you thought wrong. I don't have any implants of any kind. Ma'am, is everything all right in there? Are you in some kind of danger? You tell me, officer. I heard the alarms go off. Are the cleaners on their way? Are any of us safe? The lockdown seems to be a malfunction. I don't think we're looking at an outbreak here. Well, I'm sure the other tenants will be glad to hear that. But not you? No, officer. Not me. If you don't mind my asking, do you... Live alone? Yes, I do mind, and yes, I live alone. No spouse or daughter. Didn't you hear me? I said it was just me. Then why did you insist on being called Mrs.? I'm a widow. My wife died many years ago, in the plague. Sorry to hear that. Is that why you don't have any implants? Yes. Want to see the scar tissue on my face and neck? It's quite an embroidery. The little monsters really outdid themselves. Or do I have to show you what's left of my arm? 
Would that satisfy your curiosity? Mrs. Nader, I'm just doing my job. Huh, yes, I've heard that one before. When the cleaners took my Laura away, one of them turned to me and said precisely that. I never saw her again. Not even the body. It's like she never existed. I'm not like that. No? Oh, so you don't work for the corporation? The very same people who took everything I ever had? Just because they pay me doesn't mean they owe me. Well, isn't that a pretty thought? You best get on with your duties, officer. I'm sure you have your hands full. So long, Mrs. Nader. Helena Novak it is. Okay, now number eight. I know they were two apart, so it's either eight or four. No, I gotta ignore. Okay. So it was four then. Hey! Yo! I can hear you out there! Help me, please! What's wrong, sir? Oh, I heard this awful noise. What's going on? There's been a lockdown. A lockdown? No. Oh, God, please, not today. Well, what's so special about today? I was scheduled to undergo a, a medical procedure. It's a private matter. I'd, I'd, I'd rather not talk about it. So just help. He's blind, but I'm gonna ask anyway. Sir, I'm wondering if you've seen anything suspicious lately. I haven't seen anything in over 40 years. Ah, that's your condition. I, well, there I, was I really something in that alley. I should have told him. Fine, I won't waste your time then. Hey, wait, I didn't I did see anything. Hear something. Arian Bosky. Quiet footsteps, deliberate. Heavy breathing, angry, not hiding, hunting. Hmm, anything else? The smell, it seemed uh, oddly familiar, reminded me of my childhood. Your childhood? Yes, my family lived outside the city with all manner of creatures. When it would rain, the smell would be similar. Hmm. 